Hi guys, welcome to Projection 3D version 4 video tutorial. Today we're going to create this very beautiful scene that has a cinematic kind of look and feel to it. And we're going to create a projection of this abandoned kind of environment and I will do some advanced keying and compositing. Extract this guy from the original background and put him in our projection. So this is the original footage. And this is the kind of result we get in the end. So like I said, this is an advanced level tutorial, but it's step by step. So I'm pretty sure the beginners can also learn it pretty easily. So make yourselves comfortable and let's get started. So first we're going to import our projection image and we'll create a new 9020 by 1080 comp. Drag this image into the timeline and I'm going to go ahead and press Ctrl Alt F to make this image fit the size of our composition. And then I'm simply going to right click and transform and flip it. All right, now let's match the camera. At this point, we want to we want the grid to match the outline of the bridge. I'm going to reduce the camera's focal length to 24. Show hidden layers, disable scale on all axes, and increase along the Z. Cool. As you can see, now the grid is perfectly aligned with the bridge and the ground lines. So let's hide this grid, select our camera and the image, and create our projection. So two copies should suffice. Double click on the second scene. And now, using helper grid properties, let's create ground plane and the background. Adjust it so that it covers the entire ground. The backside plane. And now let's select bottom plane and generate position for the bridge support. So make sure that you select bottom plane. That goes our first point. We'll generate the second one over here. All right, good. So now I'm going to select both points and then I'm going to generate plane from points from the tools menu here. I'll make it cover the entire bridge. And then I'm just going to start masking. I'll draw a mask along the side part of the bridge like that. And when that's done, we're going to need to create uh, the bottom part of the bridge. So with this vertex selected, I'll head over to Tools to open Surface Modeler, Get Vertex, get the second one as well. And now that we know the position of these two vertices, we can create a polygon here. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Also, let's make it cover the bottom part. So I'll just rotate it like that. Let's see. So this is where the resize slash fill function comes in handy. As you can see, the layer is too small and it doesn't cover the mask. And what a blessing that we've added in the fourth version of Projection 3D. So now when I'll hit the plus sign a few times, the layer just got bigger, but the mask remains the same. And now it covers the mask. Now just a quick mask adjustment along the contour. And that's it. See? That wasn't too hard, was it? 
Very easy. So now we have a side part and the bottom part. And now we can create support for the bridge. First of all, I'll generate position for the support. Create a plane. Increase it and draw a mask over it. Now for the side part, get vertices, create polygon, rotate it, resize the layer in a way that it covers the entire mask, adjust that. I always disable this eye because it helps me work much faster. Then I'll add a new point and add another point. And another one. And it's done. Now for the second support element, select bottom plane, generate position for that, create a plane, increase the scale, and draw a mask along the contours of the support. And that's it. Our bridge is ready. Let's check if everything's correct. All right, great, all done. Now let's create some objects on the right side there. I'll select bottom plane to generate position for this thing. And in case some of you guys are confused at this point, let me explain. I generate position on the bottom plane because that's where the object is. And I generate second position to find the object's orientation point. So then I select both position points and create a plane. And as you can see, that gives this plane a proper orientation. Now I just need to increase it and draw a mask. Let's speed up this part. I'm sure everyone can draw a mask like that. Great. Also here, make sure to change the second mask mode to subtract. Let's see. All right, great. Done with that. Let's see. What else? All right, let's create this pipe here in the front. So first of all, We'll generate position for it. And another one. Select both. Create a plane. And mask it. And it's done. All right, next one, generate position. Create a plane. Draw a mask. And so on. So everything's pretty much self-explanatory here. We simply generate position point, our 
two position points to find objects orientation and create a plane. And then draw a mask. All right, great. Next one. Let's draw a mask here. And here. And also here. All right, let's do the next one. Select bottom plane, generate position there. Now let's mask those things in the fog. Generate position points for this one. Create a plane. Increase the size. And draw a mask. All right, let's see what else. Ah, let's also create this pillar here. Well done. Looks like we're done modeling. So let's see how well we did. Now holding Alt, I'll right, middle, and left click to move forward, left or right, or rotate the camera. In previous After Effects lessons, we would just use the camera tool for that. All right, so it looks like everything's fine, but it seems like we forgot about this tree there. So let's quickly create that. Generate position. Create a plane. And let's draw a rough mask over there. Now there's no need to mask every branch of it. Okay, done with that. Now let's open mask to increase mask feather parameter. And that should be good. Let's take a look again. Yep, that's great. Time to put things together. So let's put all the objects into projection scenes, keeping in mind that some of them are closer and others are further away. So in this project, it's pretty easy. We simply move all of our objects, except for the bottom plane and the back plane, to the first projection scene copy. Let's leave that tree there. And now I just move all of that over to the first projection scene, and that's pretty much it. Let's take a look. All right, as you can see, these things also projected on the background, so we need to erase those from the background projection image. Now look, here are the foreground objects, and here's the background, and we need to erase all of those. So 
You can do this the old way in Photoshop, or as you already know, in version four, you can do it right inside After Effects. So I'll go to Projection Image menu and click Edit. Make sure that you are in the first frame. And now using Clone Stamp Tool, I'll start erasing that thing. By pressing Ctrl and, and dragging, you can resize this area. The rest is pretty much clear, I suppose. Now, I'm sure everyone knows how to use Clone Stamp Tool. So let's fast forward this a bit. All right, great. Done with the right part. Now let's move on to the left. And that's it. Let's take a look. Let's see. Background, foreground, let's move camera forward. Great. Just a few minor fixes in this area here. Go back to the first projection scene. Find that support element and adjust the mask vertices there. Okay, now everything looks fine and the background looks correct. Let's also look at the, our model from the other side to make it clearer. As you can see, each object is in its place in the 3D space, and the scene looks proper. So here's the bridge, as well as all the other objects, the pipes and everything, and the tree. So perhaps later we'll have to create another projection for the tree so that it fits well with the background. But for now, let's work with our character. Import the footage, create a new comp by dragging it here. Awesome. Now duplicate this footage. We'll call this one body. And the second one we'll call head. Okay, good. Now let's work with the body part first. So we'll need to draw a mask. And I'll change mask mode to none for now. Add a key on the mask path and animate it to follow the character. It's not that difficult. You simply add keys and move the mask. Seven seconds should be fine. 
Let's see. Awesome. Now make sure that mask mode is set to none. Otherwise color range won't work properly. All right. Now let's go to the keying menu and apply color range. Select first eyedropper and take color from there. Select the second one and erase the rest. Repeat several times until everything is clear. And don't worry about the character's face. We only need the body. Move forward on the timeline and make sure that it all looks good and clean. And as you can see, this action affected the of button on the shirt. But you don't have to worry about that. We'll fix it. All right, good. Done with that. Now let's quickly restore the button. I'll draw a mask, change its mode to none, add a key on the mask path and animate that. Let's take a look. All right, maybe we just need to add a little bit more keys there. All right, set back mask mode to add. And do the same for the first mask. And we'll go ahead and apply matte simple choker, adjust that choke matte parameter. And now we can finally see the button, but we kind of messed up the shirt now. So what we want is this simple choker to only affect the second mask. I'll open the effects tab, hit plus sign next to composite options, choose second mask and now, Simple Choker only affects the second mask. So let's check that again. Reduce Choke Mat value a bit more. And some more. Until we get a perfect result. All right. Done with the body part. That's pretty clean. No artifacts or anything. Let's move on to the head. And we'll also do the mask. Change color to make it see better. Change mask mode to none. Add key on the mask path and animate the mask. Let's see if everything's okay. Looks like it's fine. So let's apply color range. Take it from here. Now let's clean that up. I'll reduce fuzziness to three for the head layer. Let's move on.
Let's move forward and see. Okay, cool. Seems like we're done. And yes, we can now get back and set mask mode to add. Also apply simple choker for that. Reduce the value a little bit, not too much though. And now let's go to effect, keying to apply key cleaner. Here we need to play with the values until we get the best result possible. This first value softens edges and the second one, alpha contrast, erases the alpha channel. I'll duplicate the key cleaner. This will help me achieve the best result possible much easier. Let's go forward and check it out. Might need to soften it up a bit. Let's increase simple choker. All right, almost done. So now let's switch to full resolution and have a look. Yes, I think we're good. Now our character is fully separated from the background and now we can put this guy in our projection. So first we should track the camera, but in order to do this, we won't be touching the parts we've been working on. We'll rather go to the project menu and drag the footage of the guy to the composition window. And before we start tracking, we need to create a simple mask so that the guy's movement doesn't interfere with the movement of the camera. Add key on mask path and animate it really quickly. Great, done with that. Now let's change mask mode to subtract. Go to layer, pre-compose, move all attributes. And let's go to animation, track camera. And this might take a few moments. All right. Now we need to select some points from the ground. Right click to set ground plane and origin. Create null and camera. All right, great. There's null. Let's make sure we have the proper movement. 
as you can see, everything looks excellent. All right, let's delete this. We don't need that. Select both head and body parts. Pre-compose. And now select camera, null, and footage. And let's go to stabilize 3D match move. Here we'll select the master scene, which is our projection scene where we want to put the guy. Now select all these three layers and integrate live action footage with projection scene. All right, let's go to master scene. As you can see, our guy is already there. So now we simply adjust his position and we'll do that with world transform controller. Click R to open orientation and adjust it by Y axis. And so then what you typically want to do is you might want to scale it if you think that's necessary, but that doesn't seem like we should do that at this point. So I simply change position along the Z. Like this. Okay, that's done. Now let's animate movie camera. Add keys on position and orientation. Go to the end of the comp and move camera closer to our guy. Something like this. We also can move back along the Z and fix uh, that area on the background with repeat edge pixels. So let's apply that and increase expand down. Let's also minimize the window size of the plugin to see the difference. See, what a cool feature. Saves a lot of time. No more switching back and forth with Photoshop every now and then. All right, let's pre-render and take a look then. Well, I think we can pretty much disable the tree layer. Pre-render again. And yeah, looks very cool. like a scene from a, a post-apocalyptic movie. Looks like we're almost done with the project, you guys. Now we only need to color correct our character. So let's do that. Let's head over to effect, color correction, lumetri color, and let's change some basics. Reduce temperature value to minus 99, let's say. Put saturation to 50. And now let's turn those color wheels a little bit. Take color from here for the midtones and just make it a little darker. Make those shadows sort of bluish, like this. And for highlights, I simply drag the cross to green area, make it darker. Adjust the color of the guy, and I think we're good. Maybe less whites. Yep, let's make it a bit darker. All right, great, looks very nice.
Now let's render and enjoy the result. I'll switch to full resolution. and our scene is complete. Looks very realistic and cinematic, doesn't it? Like genuine scene from a movie. So as you can see, there's nothing complicated about this process. You can do it, definitely. Here, take a look at another example. Okay, looks like this is all. So I hope that from now on, you guys will be able to create similar and even better things with the new version of Projection 3D. And I hope that this tutorial was interesting and inspiring for you. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.